So my name is Karen Costa. I have been working in higher education since 2002. I'm Clea. I am an instructional technologist. Our workshop for NYSAD is called No More Boring Online Classes, Creating Exciting, Engaging, and Effective Live Sessions. What we're hoping to do is to empower educators to create really great live sessions. So a lot of folks are leaning on these more than ever before, and we want to help them feel confident in their online session facilitation skills. We want to kind of, you know, move away from perhaps some more boring passive approaches to more active, fun sessions. And we want to do that for faculty, we want to do that for students and for all humans. We have three modules we're going to be covering. The first is called Starting Strong, the second is called Attention and Engagement, and the third is called Creating a Detailed Action Plan for Live Online Session Success. Something that jumps out to me is at the start of a session. So one of the things that I see is that Sometimes those are very quiet and folks aren't doing everything they can to get people engaged right from the minute they enter that space. So Clea and I usually use a welcome slide, for example, that gets people engaged. So we're going to talk to folks about that critical first five minutes and how you can use that first five minutes to set yourself and your learners up for success. I think an overall theme that we also cover in this workshop and in the other workshops that I've done with Karen is time management overall. So big focus on just getting used to the fact that live online sessions kind of operate in a different time frame. Like I'm still getting used to slowing down, to allowing time for people to engage in that chat, to referencing the chat, to thinking about all the other moving bits and pieces that might be part of that live online session. Along with time management, um, the other main theme that sticks out to me is engagement. It's probably the question that Karen and I get most often. How do we engage people? And hopefully folks will be surprised that you don't have to use all of these high tech options in a live session. Sometimes the simplest strategy is going to be the most effective. Clea and I really have a playful, supportive facilitation style. So we don't want anyone to feel like they need to come to this workshop and be perfect. We want you to come just as you are. We're going to support you in that. We make mistakes. We celebrate mistakes in our workshops. So come just as you are ready to learn. We're not looking for perfection. We will cheer you on. We won't try to tell you what to do or fix your teaching. We will ask you challenging questions, but um, we will really make sure that you feel empowered as a learner. Outside of higher ed, uh, what might interest folks, I live in Massachusetts, grew up in New Jersey. I am like everybody else, spending a lot of time at home right now. Uh, where I live with my husband and I have an 11 year old at home and you might have seen my three, almost three year old dog Rocky walking in the background. He's one of my, my favorite coworkers. I love to read, I love to be creative. You might have guessed that from my background. It's a really important part of, of my well being at this time is making sure that I have time for those fun, playful things in addition to all of the work that we all have to do uh, in online lear learning right now to support people. Right now, I live in New York, but my husband and I and our two cats are moving to Colorado during the pandemic. So we are, you know, one of those people. I discovered that during the pandemic, I love working remotely. So I'm kind of trying to do it forever. <laughs> um, I do really like connecting with people through Zoom, through live online sessions. But funnily enough, um, you know, when I'm outside of those live sessions, I'm an introvert. I do need a bit of a nap. Um, if I'm having one-on-one -on -one meetings with colleagues, we've pivoted to using phone calls instead, which can be a really nice, refreshing change of pace. So I think when I think about my work as it relates to live online sessions, I am always looking for alternatives. And could this be an email instead? Could we have a phone call? Anything to reduce like the eye strain. And it also takes a lot of energy to, to present online. So thinking about, you know, my own energy levels and how they're affected by doing things like this and what strategies can I share with educators to help them feel less overwhelmed, um, help them feel like they are able to take breaks and enjoy their lives and move to another state if that's something they need to do this fall um, and to keep up and uh, stay sane through it all. We recognize that people are often, you know, learning from home with their families <laughs> during the pandemic and, and might come to this workshop in pajamas, with their lunch, with kids in the background. They might need to leave the room to help their kids with distance learning. 
Um, I just want to really emphasize that your well-being is our number one priority. Everything we, we do in our workshop is going to be an invitation, not a requirement. So um, just come, again, come as you are. And if that involves, you know, kids, dogs, pajamas, a sandwich, um, we, we just want to be with you and spend time with you and learn together with you.